I'm Creston. You know me as the amazing Creston. You're watching PBR. You better not read my thoughts. What's up, everybody? PBR Podcast, Mike Plano, Derek D, and Ryan Mars still in the house. What's yeah. up, Ryan? Hey, man. Um, this was an amazing experience we just had, man. What you're going to hear uh, in this episode is the amazing Kreskin. Yeah. Right? It was pretty sick. And <laughs> Ryan, you was. were here for it. Yeah, it was uh, It was cool, man. You know, I don't often get starstruck, but that just brought back, because I remember like watching you know, Carson with my grandmother. I was a kid. I was like six. Right. And he would be on. You know, So, I mean, I've, I've heard about him for years. And I believe he's a local guy. Yeah, he's from New Jersey, yeah, man. So it's like, I wanna, where, 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 where I didn't, Jersey, I didn't get man? it out of him. Um, I didn't catch it, but I think North Jersey. Pro- yeah. Probably from where I think it, from. Yeah, I think it's from, he's from North Jersey area. Montclair area. Yeah. Oh, all right. Nah. Uh, but he's doing a show here at the House of Independence in Asbury Park, New Jersey. We had the great pleasure of him stopping in the studio yeah, man, uh, for a few cool. minutes on his way there. So Signed a book. He did. He gave us a book. And it was like, what, I felt the way you did, man. It's not, it's not I want to say the PBR Posse. It's not your average... PBR episode, right? It was a little different. And I think of that is because the amazing Kreskin, he like is amazing. Like he yeah. has an aura about You're him. You're just and watching him and listening. Him. Like, yeah, right? exactly. like, and you just, you want to just hear, like he was on Carson. Yeah. You know, because again, it's, it's such a wide range of showbiz, you know, whatever. I mean, you could get like the biggest movie star in the world in here right now and it wouldn't have that same effect because it's like, all right, yeah, a guy's been big for like five, six years. I mean, like you said, this guy, I mean, what a body of work! What yeah. a length of time! He knew like Kennedy and shit. Yeah, <laughs> like it's crazy. Yeah, not dude. really. Like, yeah. I mean, he, how old is eighty something? Eighty one years old. Eighty one years old. Him. And he looks great. He, he 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 does this. Uh, we all got our hand. We shook his hand. Yeah. Right. And it that's like a, the famous handshake. Like he's he done that feel to like everyone. A real wuss. He yeah. feel like a real wuss because I was like, oh wow, <laughs> strong. Yeah. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, so we, we're, you know, there's not. We're part of that group that got that handshake yeah, with like man. all these other huge. Yeah. Famous people. Pretty cool. It <laughs> pretty was a pretty awesome. cool experience. His book is in real time. He's doing a tour right now. Uh, you can check it out on his website. There'll be a link uh, off pbrpodcast.com. Um, it was just a, it was an amazing experience, and you're going to get to hear it now. Um, enjoy every word about it. The story it. he tells about possibly giving up his money for a show is insane. That is crazy. That. And I've heard that about him, and I didn't know if that was necessarily like a myth. But I mean, it's it true. It seems to be true. <laughs> it's legit. That is crazy. Awesome stuff, man. Thanks for letting me hang around for it, guys. Yeah, man. It was awesome. awesome. So, yeah, PBR Posse, here it comes the amazing Kreskin. Enjoy the show, and we'll see you next week. See you later. All right, guys. All right, get, we're, we're in it already. Uh, so, we, are we on we, the air? Yeah, we're, we are on. Well, I got to tell you, I got to tell listeners because this is the first time I met these two gentlemen, and uh, I have to tell you in all sincerity, no matter good taste, I will not read their thoughts publicly. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody wants. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming. Yes. I can tell you right now what Derek D's thinking. He's thinking everybody should go to DerekD.com. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, it's all about that. Kresge, they're always trying to paint me as a uh, like I'm always all about myself. Come on, man. No, no, no. You know that. You just read my mind. He you said, know, you know, uh, you know <laughs> as I travel. I meet all kinds of folks, and I think it's great that you're working as a team like this. This is. Uh, you know, it's an exciting uh, area of communication today. I mean, look at, you can be on top of things, you can be on current, st- and when I wrote the book in real time, and that's that can be gotten on at, on Barnes and Nobles. It took me took me two years to write. It's my 20th book. Yeah, it's a lot my of books. My 20th book, and it's the first time I ever wrote a book like this, but uh, people in the industry have told me, for, including uh, uh, Roger Ailes, whom I've known since the Mike Douglas days, and now he's the head of Fox, they say, Kreskin, well, it's now estimated, as of last year, I've flown the industry, the airline industry, it tells me I've, I've flown a little bit over 3 million miles. Whoa. So having flown 3 million miles, you know, been in Saudi Arabia five and a half years, the number of weeks each year, they wanted me to comment on how I thought things were changing. So it's a book of predictions of what I think is going to happen in the months, years, and centuries, the next thousand years around the world. And it's not written in stone. I tried looking in the crystal ball, but I get a headache. <laughs> but uh, it's, so it's a commentary because I spend, you know, I spend all my time uh, with people. That's I have no equipment. I'm just tuning in on their thoughts. Like today, the phone was rung since this morning because you know the riots uh, in Chicago yeah, yeah. last yeah. night and what have you. And I, I've done over a thousand university shows, 
and uh, people are commenting, and uh, you're you're amongst the first to get my commentary because I'm not politically oriented. Nobody knows how I'm going to vote, but I have. Uh, I mean, there's look when you look at my web page. Yes, I've been in uh, Trump's home because I performed in his home. I've been with Hillary Clinton. Uh, Christie's are has been the governor here, so I've been in a number of appearances his publicly, but it's really not to an, in, in, endorse them or anything else. But uh, because I spent so much time in colleges, and this was on a partly sponsored by a college campus, and then we had the rights and everything, folks, you need to, you guys go into college. You need to come to your damn senses. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking to you in a joking way. Uh, if you think that the riot and the march and everything was spontaneous. Where did you find out who paid for all this? The trema- Do you think all these people came accidentally and gathered together and started acting uh, violently? And I, uh, I believe very, very deeply in the, in the freedom of speech. And the, the, you know, you'll hear people say, well, they have the right to freedom of speech. Yes, and then, and then you heard the criticism that, uh, uh, and this is not endorsing Trump, but that Trump, uh, they saw in the past few weeks, was behaving his group like, uh, like the Gestapos and the Nazi party and what have you. The people that were rioting yesterday, and I've said that, if you study Goebbels and the Second World War, and by the way, if we don't study history, we will relive it again, and we are going to relive history. We're going to see it again. But the people that were protesting last night were behaving like Goebbels and the Nazi party because in the spirit of freedom of speech, they were stifling freedom of speech, and that's the way it started in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. You protest, you couldn't talk about certain things, you controlled it. So let's, let's come to our senses and realize, if I could told you through the years how many spontaneous riots I knew about. I knew about one riot six months ahead of time, the very days it was going to take place. We got to start thinking logically. Other than that, I have too much to say. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't it amazing, though, how this whole election process this time is, it's the relation, people relate it to Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, all of those, especially with Trump. Which I kind of find right? ridiculous. Yeah. I do mean, you find, like, do you find, and, and now the kids acting that way, do you find that? I think, uh, I think, the, first of all, you got to realize they're running out of, uh, I think it was perplexed people, is that you had a showman come along who caused more interest in politics than anybody has in some 20, 30, 40 yeah. years. I mean, uh, uh, and by the way, uh, um, I, we're, I don't have you, are, is anybody aware that there have been debates on television? Uh, I predict that it's going to be, I understand there's going to be 2,704 more debates between now and, uh, and <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be and, some and, like that. Yeah. But you got to give Trump credit and talk about a savvy guy. Last night he said, I'm finished with the debates. He said, there's no more to talk about. Yes, people are getting bored because you're hearing a redundancy. Yeah. Yeah. The only Great. way now you can get uh, attention if you're on the debates, and some of them are going to do this in the near future, is to explain who they were having sex with and the kind of sex because there's nothing else to talk about. <laughs> there really is nothing else to talk and about. And Kreskin, let's be honest, you already know. Well, you, now they're you know, getting you know the answers. Now to this you question. folks are getting me in trouble. I got to tell you, <laughs> I, I've uh, I've worked on eighty four crime cases, so I do have. And by the way, uh, I got to say this in all honesty: the two guys I'm on with, I don't get the impression they've been in any serious crime cases that we've discovered. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You'd be you'd be correct by saying that they haven't discovered yet. But in the, re- <laughs> the book in real time is really a commentary on, you know, uh, we we're in a dramatic time, and uh, I was asked. Uh, uh, just recently on a number of the cable news stations who I thought would take us out of the uh, depression we're in uh, because it's the worst, the, the, not depression, uh, re- re- economic reset. It's the worst one we've ever had in history. Mm-hmm. They said we got pictures of you uh, in, 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 in Washington and so forth. You got to understand, by the way, first of all, I'm not sure we can blame exactly our politicians because there's something also in Washington, D.C., which people don't talk about called lobbyists. Hmm. And, and university students say to me, my God, no one's taught us this in college. I, I spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. Right now in Washington, there are approximately 
22,000 lobbyists. 22,000. If you, do you really think, I'm just going to ask you a question, you really some, think that someone can remain in government for 40 years and not have some behind the scenes profit going oh, on? Oh, come sure. on. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the system's I mean, it's broken, right? I mean, it's the way, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, anyway, other than that, by the way, listen. I want to make this clear. I have nothing against our political figures. I, I just wish that most of them had been on the Titanic. But, you know. <laughs> I think I think what, I think what Kreska just said was amazingly profound. I thought that was awesome. Thank yeah. you for doing that on our show. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> so, Kreska, you're, you're a showman, a mentalist, uh, right? You could you could read the thoughts of people, or you you have a That's book what out I do for a, yeah in real time in real time. Well, the book is uh, is dealing with predictions, but you know, my audience. Uh, I think the reason I was able to. Uh, by the way. I don't want people to think I, I don't know it all. I claim to be a total authority and know a tremendous amount about absolutely nothing. I love that. <laughs> and I know very little about anything else. So I get all my information from audiences and people because, uh, you know, I don't have, a, I don't have footlights between my audience and, my, and myself. I'm tuning in on their thoughts. A perfect example is uh, well, my, one of my favorite stories was at the Riviera in, in Vegas a couple of years ago. Uh, a couple of months I was there. One night I said, you know, so-and-so in the audience is thinking of such and such. And this elderly man stands up, distinguishing guy, and I said, who are, the, who are their names? He said, Kreskin, there, there are pets. We're not from here. We're not from uh, Vegas. We're, we're here on vacation. And he told us where he was from. He said, there are pet dogs. We love them. And I said to him, I said, didn't you say to your wife, I wonder if Kreskin can tell me uh, my army serial number? I wish, guys, I wish we had camera work like that there. He slammed his fist on the table and he says, damn it. He says, yeah. That was at an, uh, we're staying in another nightclub. They, he says, that was hours ago. I'm eating dinner. I said that to her. I said, uh, who knows your army number? Well, you can ask anyone you know, man or woman in the service. They'll never forget it, but they don't talk about it. He says, I don't think I ever told my wife the number. And uh, in the next two minutes, I gave him the exact digits of his army serial number, and he was in World War II. But if he didn't know the answer, I couldn't tell him that. So in all my shows now, and it's an adventure, it's an adventure, whether it's a private group, it's in a gymnasium, it's in a college, or it's in a stadium. Uh, I turn my check over to my audience. I leave the theater under guard. And as one, one reviewer in Pittsburgh a few years ago said, he says, it's just like watching a mystery play. The audience is creating the answer to the mystery. The audience size my check anywhere in the theater. I'm brought back in. No one speaks to me. And if I don't find my check... I forfeit my fee, and it goes back to the people who booked me. And that's a hell of a way to make a living, guys. That's, wow. Yeah, and I just, uh, this year, this past year, I failed my 10th time, <laughs> which is not many out of, out of 6,000. But in New Zealand, in one night at a coliseum, and they had a press conference the next day uh, that was covered up with, by over 100 reporters outside the theater. I lost in one night $51,000. And... and Jeez, is that like in your contract? You write, that's in that's your contract. That's my agreement. No, it's an agreement. Wow. Everyone knows all over the world. Doesn't matter where I'm working. Minnesota State Fair was eleven thousand people. Oregon State Fair was thirty thousand. Uh, just just recently, a banquet affair in a private uh, a home was like a hundred some people. That is my and I have uh, well one famous incident was University of Illinois. I don't know how many times I appeared there, but I walked through the gymnasium. You could hear a pin drop. It's like 8,000 people. I think it was a family weekend. And you had trouble walking because guys and gals were sitting on the tarp on the, in chairs and people are in the, in the bleachers. And I come to this elderly man. I thought he probably was a parent. I said, would you stand? They asked him to open his mouth. No check. I felt like a jerk. I felt like an absolute jackass. I walked 10 feet away from him and something in my mind, told me to come back. And I walked back to him and I said, Sir, if I embarrass you, you just sit down. I apologize. Would you open your mouth again? He did. I said, Does this have to do with the roof of your mouth? I'll never forget this till my last day on earth. Reached in his mouth, took out his upper plates, and handed me my check. Oh, ah. wow. And the, the, fact, the fact that you can, That's you awesome. had that thought, right? And you found that check. I mean, this show is but he all had to concent He had to concentrate. The people, not him. Right. The people who hit it had to think. Right. If they didn't think of where it was hidden, 
Forget the, it. So the check this, was this, in his mouth? Isn't that gross? In, inside and you knew it the twice. Plates in his mouth. <laughs> you, you didn't check that. You didn't cash that one, right? You made <laughs> yeah, write, write me a clean one? You had cl- plastic well, gloves me, on? They gave me a new it, check. Yeah, good. Preston, it's 2016. Well, the, the, the Ebola well, could be on I, that hey, check. Hey, listen, I walked, through a, <laughs> I walked through a gymnasium in a university and picked a man in a suit and walked him to the stage and said something about a gun. I thought, this is stupid. He's not a policeman or anything. And I finally opened his jacket. He's a plain clothesman. I would never, ever do this in my regular life. I reached into his shoulder holster, which got the gun, and turned the barrel towards my eyes. They hey. taken tweezers and found found. That's a check. You forfeit. You forfeit that check. You knew the check was in pieces, and you knew it wasn't going to go off anyway. It was a, it was a blank. Right? So let's let's go. Did back he though. say his thinking is a blank, or the check was probably no, both? No, no, no. Probably both. no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, how does this? How, how do you, as a child, find this path? It happened when I was nine years old. I was in junior high school. I was in high school. Was it like I, a God given? I was in grade school. So I was in I was in third grade, and uh, uh, it was raining outside. And Miss Curtis said, "We're not going to go out and play." I'm nine years old in third grade. New Jersey. In New Jersey, and she picks a gal, uh, Jane Hamilton. It was leave the classroom, and we hit a beanbag in the classroom. She brings Jane back, and she said, "I'm going to teach you a game." She's Jane. Walk around, we we put your check in someone's desk. Uh, not check it, we put the beanbag in someone's desk. Uh, the classmates will say, if you're getting near it, you're getting warm. If you're not near it, you're cold. Game of hot and cold. You're getting hot if you're near it. She found the beanbag, and I went home, and I thought, she didn't, she didn't pick me to play. So my brother, I walk 10 minutes to my grandparents' house. They were from Sicily. They built this house themselves. I said, they lived upstairs. They were renting the downstairs to make ends meet. I said, hide this penny up in grandma's house grandpa was working and he walks upstairs calls me when he's ready and i'll run upstairs i walk into this big kitchen my grandmother was a chef in sicily a wonderful cook walks to this big kitchen she's sitting there wondering what's going on she didn't speak much english walked to my grand my uncle's bedroom he was at work climbed up on a chair because i was a short kid i reached behind a, I reached behind a curtain, curtain rod and felt a penny and then i suddenly remembered I forgot to tell Joey to talk to me. No one spoke to me. No one said anything. And that was the beginning. And in fourth and sixth grade, in, in show and tell, Miss Galloway, my teacher, had me try to read the thoughts of my classmates. I remember in sixth grade, I said to Gloria, I said, Gloria, I told everyone in the class to think of a movie you've seen. She's sitting in the back next to Judy Dunn. I said, you weren't thinking of a movie right now, were you? She says, no. I said, what was it, around Christmas, like a half year? She said, yes. I said, was it such and such a movie? And it was the movie she was thinking of. That was the beginning. Then in ninth Uh grade, uh, my lady friend passed away this past year, but I took her around the world in trips. In a yearbook, they gave it to me just a few months ago, picture me performing in high school. I was in ninth grade, and I was performing in assembly. And by ninth grade, I was doing two-hour concerts around the world, two-hour shows. Wow, so awesome. it was a slow thing, though. It didn't happen overnight. But is it like something that you... you, you I think like it was inherent, but no one gift taught was, me. It was a gift that I learned to begin. You got to understand. You know, I, had, I had a hero when I was a kid. No one I saw. There's a comic that you can look up now by Lee Falk called Mendrake, and it was called Mendrake the Magician. And he was the biggest comic, one of the big. And and Lee Falk wrote another comic called The Phantom. There's been many cartoon and uh, series done The Phantom, but Lee Falk created this man. He wasn't a magician; he had hypnotic powers, and he was able to tune in people's thoughts. And someone gave me the comic when I was five, and I and I, in my mind, I play acted him amongst friends. And then ten years or ten years before Lee Falk died, they had a seminar at Lee Sardi's in New York with all these professors and researchers saluting this man who created Mandrake and the Phantom. And they invited me there, and he he said hello to me, and he was talking about how he created this. And in the middle of the conference, he stopped and said, "I want you to know something. I've been writing this since 1935. The only person living that I've ever seen or heard." that's come closest to Mandrake is Kreskin. Can you imagine? Oh, wow. That's great. That was like a gift. Yeah. That's awesome. Amazing. How do you feel when that's said? I was, I got to tell you guys, it's one of the, one of the experiences, you know, I've, I've, I've worked with hundreds and thousands of people and all the experiences from Carson to Jimmy Fallon to 
you know, to read just and all like a stories to tell because my life's my life's been like an adventure. It's it's really it's really wild and I and I, uh, they said, would I ever retire? And I'm going. I, I can announce it here. Yes, I'm going to. Ten days after I pass away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, when you're when you're uh, when you're taking this journey, do you find that you have to um, you have to exercise yeah. exercise it? To make I it? run. Uh, uh, last night, <laughs> I didn't tell my road manager this. I tripped <laughs> on. Uh, I run about twenty minutes uh, uh, at night, either on a. Uh, uh, on a machine if it's wintertime or outdoors, and I decided to run outdoors. And all right, all right whoever left the toy outdoors, you know, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sue. Uh, uh, I don't, uh, I don't get involved too much in attorneys. Although I probably should, because Ugh. those of you going into law, someone should warn you. People, people. Say, well, I travel. I, they should warn you that the United States today, unlike any country in the history of mankind. There's now one attorney for every 200 people. That's why law schools and law firms are closing all over the United States. So think of what you're going to do when you go into work. Right. Yeah. What's the difference between a mentalist and a like psychic? A psychic? <laughs> I can't for, foretell the future. Yeah, when I wrote in real time, I talked about I talked about things that I sense taking place in the future, but I use my own intuition. I don't give people advice. I'm not telling them, you know, this is going to happen to them right. in the near future, unless I'm the one that intends to commit the crime and hey. violence. No, no, no. <laughs> but uh, I, I, that's not what I wear. I, I work on how people think, and uh, uh, I remember... Um, well, anyway, I want to tell you some of the stories that uh, that the politicians say. By the way, the last time I saw Trump, it was after he was reelected to to a governor, and I had my hand against his head. So the sign they put under him when it was reproduced was "I told you so," meaning you know that he had won the election. And this is not this is not predicting or supporting anything in the future. But I'm not a fortune teller, and yet my you know I'm, I my shows by the way uh, are run about uh, my full evening shows are two hours and thirty some minutes in length. Oh wow! Uh, tonight I'm appearing in the New Jersey area for a, for a ninety minute program. But they're really at adventures because people come year after year because new experiences take place. And if you ever see me do this on camera, I'm telling my uh, the directors. I can't uh, work with this person anymore. They're probably thinking something. I don't say this on the air. That's not something to talk about publicly, maybe something very personal. I've been involved in, in preventing a few suicides that people had been considering. That's awesome. you know, and, I, and not that I created any such things, but preventing them. I mean, be, with these guys on the air, you know, you know what I like about these two gentlemen? And I, you can put this as a quote. They're great guys to work. They're flaky, but they're good guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's nailed it. Right? I, like the, I, like he's the, nailed it. I like the zings uh, Kreskin's throwing no, out. But, yeah, hey, you know something? I, got a, I have a sign in my office, and all of you folks – uh, listening, don't forget this. Uh, I have a sign. If anybody ever calls me politically correct, kick me in the ass. <laughs> when I was a kid, a little boy, and there was a Second World War, you had Jack Benny in a movie. Someone was impersonating Hitler. They were mocking him. Uh, one of the great, probably the greatest comedian in the last century, success-wise, was Bob Hope. He was con constantly satirizing our our enemies. If we can't laugh at ourselves, mm -hmm. then we're losing some of our democracy. Hundred percent. That's a conversation that comes up often on the show. We talked about it with with uh, Ryan Mark, I guess we had uh, previously on the show. Yeah. What, when you what, what's a trigger? Like when you look at somebody like Derek. Uh, oh, what's what, a trigger with him? <laughs> you know, what's a trigger? That, is he a type of person that thinks a certain way? Uh, do you, is it almost Wait, like now, first of all, Can I tell you something? First of all, you, you made an error when you said that he thinks. He makes no, a lot no, of errors. No, no. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. You, you know, guys are bad. No, no. I, <laughs> One I, of us I is have, bad. It's, I have the fun. other one's okay. I have, I have fun because a lot of the comedians I've been with have uh, have had uh, uh, fun kidding about things like that. I don't I don't judge you. And by the way, you got to understand something because I meet people all the time. I'm not I'm not figuring out what they're thinking of instantly. A person has to concentrate, has to cooperate. But you got to also understand because you're – we're, we're living in an area that's not very far from a, a city called Atlantic City. I'm banned from all the casinos in the Western world. From really, I could. Uh, there's once in a while they'll let me play. Uh, they'll let me play back blackjack because uh, not uh, because the dealer doesn't know his cards. I can't play poker anywhere in the Western world. Uh, a story that changed my, my climate was in uh, uh, Aruba. I was at a casino, and I'll wrap it up real quick. I. 
I, uh, uh, when it was closed, I, into my run, I said, let's go to a casino. People in Aruba didn't know me. It was people from Canada, the United States, uh, England, what have you. So I went into a casino to get, I closed another casino that night. And I went in with $37, our money. I don't know what it was in their money. They converted it. And the casino was supposed to close at 1 o'clock. And the table was open at 1.30. My road manager keeps walking. And I said, get the hell out of here. And he kept looking at the table because I was winning some money. They were keeping it open because they were hoping I'd lose money back. <laughs> quarter of three, quarter of three, I stopped. I went to my hotel. I cashed the money, went to another place and got my money cash. And I said... I got the guy that booked me who was from the States. Come on and help me. He says, what the hell happened? He says, help me. I said, help me pack the cash. It was $100 bills in my pockets. I'm afraid if they open the suitcase, they'd think something was seriously wrong. $37 I started with. I won $22,400. crazy. Exactly $22,400. That's amazing. You should have seen me when I got the play. looked like I had gained 40 pounds of weight. I had all this on me. <laughs> So, guys, by the way, the people, you folks watching, and they agree to this after the interview, they're going to play poker with me. It's going to be a quiet No, game. no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> don't you, not don't touch you, the I cards. I agree to that. Zero Dennis, chance. you can play with Dennis. Listen, right? Guys, I got to go a little bit. But I'll tell you something. When I come back in the area, we're going to do this again. You guys are good to work. And Thank you, you know Chris. what's I good? I think you're great. This is awesome. You know what's good? We, we, I love my work. I'll tell you some serious things in the future. And the book, by the way, <laughs> is in real time. In real time. And I... And I Hey, did you see the cover? That's beautiful. You put the cover You're a good-looking like man. I like it that. It's like, <laughs> it looks like it's, it's you right there. I know. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you one final question right. before you go? Because right. you've you've been around for the game a long time. You said I'm, Johnny Carson, yeah. Jimmy Kimmel. I did 80 found. shows with Carson. With Regis, uh, I did Regis 105 shows. How, that's that's amazing. How, how do you see, the last question I'll ask you is, how do you see, uh, like with the technology, how do you see that progressing in the future? Do you? It is progressing. It certainly is progressing. I mean, it gets smaller and smaller. Yeah. You go from Carson. Yeah, to but because the yes, today three million uh, viewers in, in a network thing is considered a big audience. Years ago, a show would be canceled. Right. But something has gone. Something has happened to late night television. This is the first time anybody has ever said this publicly. I just talked to some broadcasters behind the scenes about a week ago, and they said, "Kreskin, no one's ever said this. You watch a show." No matter what the show is, I've been on with a lot of them. The guest comes on, you talk to them and say hello, and then you, you leave and the next guest comes on. Johnny Carson, Jack Parr, Steve Allen, David Letterman watched the show. The guest came on and stayed on the show as the next guest came on. Right. Some of the most wonderful things that happened when you had some character on and a couple of others gone on, they got in arguments and people talked about the next day. We've lost some of the flavor of late night television. Hmm. That's great insight. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to say so goodbye, but I'll Thank say you, to be Kreskin. continued. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Have a great show tonight. Thank you. Get Thank a picture you. together. Yes, definitely. And by the way, this picture can only be used for legal purposes. <laughs> Revolution. Revolution.